thinking ahead of Sokka, goes back to pass, goes wrong, down to the left side to Zeno, oh, Colvin, Zeno has it, down the far side, he goes to the two-yard line, and he's pulled down to two, great catch by Colvin, Zeno. Well, hello, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video, and welcome to the great before we get started, just want to say thank you so much to everyone out there who's been watching my videos. Thank you! If you can maybe give this video a thumbs up or possibly leave a comment below or maybe even share this video, it would mean so much to me. But anyway, just thank you so much for just taking time out of your day to check out this video. Thank you! Well, the New York Giants. Training camp, well, for the rookies started yesterday. I don't think there's any access um, as far as like, uh, you know, news coverage or whatever, anybody getting in there and be able to watch it. Um, a week from today, next Wednesday, that's when the pads go on. Uh, I think the veterans got to show up next Tuesday, but next Wednesday, the pads go on, and that's when things are going to start moving along. Um, that's when I believe, uh, you know, the media will be able to be there or whatever, and they'll be able uh, you know. Uh, check it out and see what's going on and everything. And we'll, we'll get a little uh, more in-depth and detail coverage of, as far as, you know, what's going on. And I'll, I'll have it so much without the pads on, without guys trying to do the things they can do. I mean, it's kind of really tough to judge what's, especially like offensive linemen. I mean, yeah. I mean, if they can't, you know, put their hands on defensive players or block them or anything like that. It's kind of tough to tell exactly how the offensive line is doing. Yeah, so in a, in a, in a week, we'll, we'll, we'll have a little better idea what's going on. But I, uh, training camp started. Before you know it, <clears throat> preseason games will be here. Before you know it, regular season will be here. Before you know it, Giants will be lining up against the Titans. Crazy, isn't it? But I found this article. Um <clears throat> Yeah, I mean it's it's very it's it's you know very informative, it's very good. But, but with this one here, it's from it's on Giants Wire. Okay, they got seven Giants with the most to gain at training camp. You know, I mean, and then the seven they came up with. Yeah, I mean it's you know it's yeah the, 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 these guys they, they got a lot to lot to gain at the training camp. But you can make arguments for other guys as well too. You know, I mean because there's a lot of guys that. Um, you know, might be fighting for their lives. You know, some guys, there, there's some spots that, you know, might might be open or be available. Some guys, you know, might be able to slide in under the radar, maybe get get in on the 53-man roster. So there's a lot of guys that you can go over. So what I'll do is, as I, we go over to each each one of these seven guys, uh, you know, I'll do count counterpoint, you know what I mean? You know, the, the good, and, but then also, you know, um, maybe some somebody else, in that same position might might be, you know, fighting for their lives or might have something to gain, too. All right, so let's take a deep dive, shall we, into this uh, article from Giants Wire. Seven Giants with the most to gain in training camp. All right, the New York Giants. I got this uh, article here from, uh, we got Giants Wire. All right, the seven Giants with the most to gain at training camp. And I said, it's hard to argue. You know, I mean, all these guys, that the seven guys that have on this list, it's hard to argue. I mean, yes, absolutely. They, these seven guys, yes, they do. But there's other guys out there, too, that need, you know, that have a lot to gain. But, but with this article here, we're just going to go with, uh, you know, the, the, the seven that they got. All right. Now, the, the New York Giants, rookies and select veterans, all right, will report for training camp. They did that yesterday. All right. The remainder of the team will report next Tuesday, and the first padded practice will be next Wednesday, one week from today. It may be hard to believe, but football season is just around the bend. With the start of the Giants camp now just a week away, here's a quick look at seven players who stand the most to gain. All right, that first one I got up here is Julian Love. Okay, Mr. Duct Tape, as they call him. All right. Julian Love will enter training camp the favorite to start alongside Xavier McKinney at safety. So what could he possibly have the game? The reality is that Wink Martindale may want to do a lot more with Love than just start him at safety. He's always been a Swiss Army knife, or as Joe Judge called him, uh, Mr. Duct Tape, right? Uh, Swiss Army knife-like player and is too valuable to be tied down to one spot. I think the biggest adjustment is that it's pretty aggressive. It's fun to be in a deep be in his system. 
Love told Good Morning Football in a recent interview. We've enjoyed having him so far and getting to know him for sure. And now we're gonna, going to get after it on D this year. Okay, well, I'll be looking forward to that. Because the, the Patrick Graham was, you know, rush, rush with whatever, three, four guys. Everybody just drops back. Let him complete the pass in front of you. Come up, make the tackle. Tackle him there and just have him... You know, have a 12, 13, 14 play drive and watch him. You know what I mean? That was a little, you know, sometimes that was that was a little tough to take. Right? Love has the opportunity to prove to the new staff that he can play all over the field and in just about any role Martindale could dream up. Now, that's true because, I mean, as we see, I mean, you know, this is last year, Ju- Julian Love, all right? I mean, you know, his, uh, his grades, you know, weren't, weren't super spectacular, not horrible. We're not super spectacular. I mean, you know, we're not looking at like an all pro here or nothing. Actually, the first year he graded out a 70.5 here, right? The last two years he graded out a 55. So, I mean, overall it was a 55. His run defense is a 53. His tackling is 77. Very good. His pass rush, when he had a chance to rush the pass, it was pretty good. And his coverage, 57. Decent. Not, you know, nothing super duper spectacular. But, I mean, what we'll look is what they talk about. Okay, is that they got him all over the place. I mean, he was he was on the defensive line last year 43 times. He was in the box 140 times. He was a slot corner 211 times. He was the wide corner 35 times. And he was the free safety 182 times. So, I mean, you know, he was all over the place. He's very, very valuable. Um, now, this, this, you know, as the other years were as well, too. But this is a big resume year for him, you know. You know, if the Giants don't want to sign him, which they may not want to, uh, you know, he's putting his resume down for next year. You know, he's going to be passing it out to all the teams, right? Um, you know, look what I did. I started. This is my body work. Is You know, they had me all over the place here. That, that's what I can do. Now, I don't know if the Giants going to want to sign him. I mean, because this year, I mean, if he does just kind of so so, it's 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 a matter of him maybe making. I'm just throwing numbers out there. Uh, maybe three or four million, but if he maybe steps it up and has a nice nice year, maybe get paid seven, eight million, nine million. You know, not he's not getting paid nothing crazy, unless he just goes off the hook this year. I, I yeah, I can't really see that happening. But it's a big you know, big year for him because I mean, if you're looking. He's going to get paid three or four million annually compared to seven or eight or nine. And then you can, and then somebody signs him for a three-year uh, a deal. I mean, you're ask getting another three, three, four million a year for three. You know, you're looking at an extra ten million, twelve, fifteen million dollars over the life of a contract. You know, so that's a lot of money. So it's a big, big year for him. But so I don't know if the Giants are going to want to do that. I mean, they 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 got McKinney. I hope they resign him when it's time. But then they, they just brought in their own guy, Belt, and they just spent a draft pick on him, okay? Um, and they could certainly do the same thing next year. You know, they got we got Love in the fourth round, you know, a few years ago. Now, this is Love's third different coach, um, let's say, in four years, okay? And it's the second GM he's been with. So, but I mean, do the Giants going to want to spend, you know, four or five million, whatever, to keep him? Next year, are they going to want to maybe draft another safety, possibly in the fourth round, like Julian Love was? And that way they have McKinney, they maybe have Belton, and they, and they had their, oh, another one of their own safeties on the team, which would be why and if he wanted to come in the fourth round, you're looking at like maybe what, 800000 Would you rather pay somebody 800000 you know, or I mean, or keep Julian Love and maybe have to pay him four, five, six million? So that's a big decision. Joe Shane's going to have to make, but this is a big year without question for Julian Love. All right. Then the next guy we got here is Ricky Seals Jones. All right. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure this guy just wants to find a home, and I can't I can't blame him. The Giants appear content with the tight ends that they have on the roster headed into training camp, and that means plenty of opportunity. And while rookie Daniel Bellinger seems to be the starting favorite early on, Okay, Ricky Seals Jones can find his way into a larger role with a strong summer. Yes, he could. The Giants signed Seals Jones this offseason and hope to get the most out of the 27 year old. 
And if the combination of Brian Dable and Mike Kafka run 12 personnel, personnel frequently, that bodes well for the veteran because you have Bellinger and then who's the second tight end, right? Now, I mean, you know, it could be Jordan Akins too. So, I mean, you know, it's, they, they both got it. Now, Jordan Akins, okay, is, 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 uh, uh, was only with the one team, okay? But, but he's also like 30 years old too, because he, he spent some time, I believe, was in the Texas Rangers farm system for baseball. So that's why he's, he's only played four years, but he's 30 years old. So he's certainly not the long term solution. I don't know if Ricky Seals Jones is. However, I mean, you know, if, uh, you know, we get Daniel Bellinger, maybe we can pick up another tight end once again, maybe in the draft next year. But if we want to keep Ricky Seals Jones, keep him uh, uh, on the cheap, right? Right? Especially if he knows the Dable and Kafka offense makes him valuable, right? Uh, ultimately, Seals Jones is an opportunity to steal a starting job or at the very least practice his way into a significant role. Now, I mean, you know, if you got, you know, right? I mean, he's been in Arizona, Cleveland, Kansas City, Washington. Now he's with the Giants. I mean, you know. So, you know, I mean, his best year was... 2018, he had 34 receptions, 300 averages 10 yards of reception. I mean, you know, nothing super spectacular, right? I mean, I, I believe he's a he's, he's you know, like a decent blocking tight end, right? But I mean, it is, is some you know these numbers. I mean, 12 in 10 games, he had 12 receptions. Here he was in 14 games, he had 14 receptions. I mean, here in 15 games, he had 34 reception. You know what I mean? So it's like. Here he played in 13 games. He had 30 receptions. You know, nothing super. All right, now you got uh, Jordan Akins here. They said he, to he guy there? Yeah, he's 30. Yeah, he just turned 30 this year. Yeah, you know, but he only played four years, right, for the Texans. So, I mean, right? But, I mean, you know, yeah, he's kind of like the same thing. A 17, 36, 37, 24. Nothing super spectacular. He's only had three touchdowns his whole career. Uh, you know, 13 yards of reception, 11, 10, about nine right here. You know what I mean? So nothing super spectacular. But he has something to prove, too, as well. I mean, if, you know, if he winds up being a, uh, you know, a good, maybe good red zone target or if he, you know, if he winds up doing well in the 12 personnel or if he can, you know, pick a role here and, and, and run with it, maybe the Giants – we sign him after this year, you know? So, I mean, I think between Aikens and Ricky Seals Jones, they got a, they got a nice little battle going on. So that'd be very, very interesting. Because I want to see also how many tight ends do they keep on the active roster? Do they keep two? Do they keep three? You know, if they do keep three, who are the three going to be? Right? Very, very interesting. And then also, who does get, when they have the 12 personnel, or if, if Daniel Bellinger, don't want to say, but it gets hurt, or it needs a needs a needs a uh, a blow, you know. I mean, he needs to take a take a breather or something like that. Who's the second guy that comes in there, right? Who you know takes his right? So who gets the reps, right? So is it going to be Aikens or is it going to be Ricky Seals Jones? That'd be very interesting. But I mean, as far as just saying, you know, that uh, you know Ricky Seals Jones has got a lot, you know. I mean, Aikens has got a lot too, you know. I mean, yeah. He wants to play as well, too. So that would be very, very interesting. I'd like to see, you know, who winds up winning that battle. Right? But it, it does certainly look um, right now, just right now, though, anyway, that Bellinger has the inside uh, role uh, or inside uh, position to get the, uh, the be the first first round, uh, the first the starter. All right. Then we got Richie James Jr., Okay. Well, you know, I mean, you know, he's, it's that also with his, um, his receiving, okay? His receiving is, in one respect, is really good. And then another, I'm going to show you some stats. It's not so good. But uh, more than that, just a second. Perhaps no player in a 90 man roster stands the game more in training camp than Richie James Jr. Giants are in search of a new return man. And James certainly fits that bill. Yes, he has. He's returned 51 punts to 373 yards. I mean, nothing super spectacular there. You know, like, what, seven yards of, of return? I mean, I, not bad, not bad. And 47 kickoffs for 1,081 yards and one touchdown in his career. 
So the experience is there. He'll compete with the likes of Gadarius Tony and CJ Board for these roles. But there's more to James than, the, than his uh, return prowess. He also, very capable receiver. I mean, that's, you know, I'll show you some numbers here, right? Who could grind his way into an offensive role. With multiple pass catchers sitting out this past spring, James was among a handful of players, Wondell Robinson and another, who seized on that opportunity. Big Blue may have... No they have numbers. Yes, they do at wide receiver, but James' special teams ability could be what gives him the edge. Now, that's, I mean, that's going to be huge. I mean, if you're not starting, you got to be playing special teams. I mean, you have to, and you have to be valuable at special teams. Okay. And that's what he can bring. Okay. So let me just show you here. All right. Now, and, you know, it's kickoff returns. You know, he's only, you know, he didn't play last year. Okay, so we got 2018, 19, 20. You know, I mean, it's, it's a, you know, 7.3 yards of a punt return, uh, 23 yards of kickoff return. He had one kickoff, uh, ran back for touchdown in 2018. All right. Now, the good thing all right, with this is, is receiving. Okay. Let's see. I mean, look at that. All right. 18.1. 2018 with the 49ers, 14.4. He caught nine passes for 130 yards. 14.4 yards. But right here, well, that's a very small sample size, though. Six receptions. 27 and a half yards of reception. All right? Here, right? He caught 23 passes, 15 of one for first downs. 17.1 yards of reception. Now, you know what I'm saying? That's the good, right? They're not so good as he's played one, two, he's played three seasons, and he has 38 catches, right? He played in 40 games, he has 38 catches. He has less than one catch a game, so that's not so good, all right? So, but when he, if they get him the ball, the man gets some yards, and he gets, like, first downs, right? I mean, here he had nine receptions, four first downs. Here he had six receptions, five first downs. So, if you get him the ball... As a wide receiver, you know, he'll get, he's going to gain some yards for you. It just – something tells me, especially with the 49ers, right? I mean, if, if you know, if he was that good of – that special of a wide receiver, he'd have a heck of a lot more catches than this, right? especially because you can see. I mean, he played 13 games here, played 16 games. played in 16 games there, and he only had six catches. I mean, a lot of the, the reason why he played in 16 games also was because he was on the special teams. All right. Doesn't mean he, he was a receiver for every game, but, you know, it wasn't like he missed a boatload of time in these three years. Okay. But, you know, he only got three, 38 receptions in three years. That's, yeah, that's not good. But, said, but, you know, he does fit the mold because, you know, if he's not going to be on the uh, starter, you got to play special teams, and that he can do. I've got here, running back, Mr. Gary Brightwell. Yes, he does. He's got uh, he's got a whole lot. All right. Now, I'll show you the Giants drafted Gary Brightwell specifically because of his special team ability. <clears throat> Not these Giants. All right. Judge and uh, Gettleman drafted him. All right. Not Shane or Dable. Okay. He, this guy came along with the team. All right. And in his rookie season under former head coach Joe Judge, he filled that role admirably. In 2022, head coach Brian Dable and special teams coordinator Thomas McGay will likely want him back in that role. However, there will be an opportunity for Brightwell to take on additional responsibility. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Behind starting back Saquon Barkley, there's quite a bit of uncertainty. Mm. Yeah, no. I mean, because... Uh, I'll show you. I mean, you know, they they brought in some. They brought in a couple running backs. Okay, <laughs> they thought highly that highly of this guy, and they might have brought in some running backs. So, all right, the depth chart consists of Matt Breida, Antonio Williams, Sandro Patzgummer, love that name, and rookie just Sean Corbin, who I heard was who, who did very well in uh, the mini camp and all that and everything. So. And there's no clear-cut favorite to serve as number two. That I don't was the door for Brightwell. Uh, yeah, I mean, nothing's locked in stone, okay? It's just that some of the guys that they brought in, they're comfortable with, they know who they are, 
right? After tw- taking just 12 snaps, actually, I thought, well, uh, PFF, I think they, I think he has 13 snaps. He's taking just 12 snaps on offense as a rookie. Bright will now have a chance to establish himself as a legitimate option on the ground. Okay, so we got, oh, nope. That's, uh, all right, there we go. Yeah, okay, well, I'm saying pro football focus got him with eight total snaps on offense. Eight in the first week of the season. Then the rest of the season, after week one, actually, if you want to do that, after week three, all right, he, the rest of the season, the final, what, 15 weeks, <laughs> he had three snaps on offense. So as bad as our offense was last year, okay, if, you know, he couldn't get more plays than that, I mean, that was just a rookie, I understand, okay? But, um, you know, let's see, special teams. All right, let's see here. So he played, he played a lot on special teams, 194 snaps on special teams. Okay, nothing super spectacular, graded out of 58.4. I mean, nothing unbelievable. Okay, but he played, you know, he played a lot. Let's see what we got here. Snaps by position here. Okay. He was in the backfield seven times. Oh, seven, I said the first week, seven times. Okay. He was in the back, he was in the slot one time. So I, I don't know. They have they have twelve here, and some reason uh, when I went to the other page, I had him on thirteen. So I have no idea. But he was on kick coverage, he was on kick return, he was on punt coverage and punt return. So he was special teams demon. So he said he loves special teams. He played a lot of you know a lot of snaps on special teams. So we'll have to wait and see. But as far as that, I mean, I think you know, yeah. Um, I mean, as I said, they they brought in their own guys, you know. So I mean, I mean, does it does it mean, obviously that you know, he doesn't have a chance? Oh, of course not. Of course he's got a chance, absolutely. But you know what I mean? Matt Breida, right? Uh, Gary Brightwell, and, uh, Antonio Williams, Sandra Platzcomer, but they uh, they got the Jashawn Corbin, who they uh, undrafted, right? Who uh, from Florida State? I do believe. Yeah, I mean, for her, he did a very good job, like in, in the mini camps and all that and everything. But yeah, I mean, there's absolutely, I guess, no stone cold number one lock favorite. But I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, to be to be the backup, all right. So, but he, he'll have his work cut out for him if he's gonna, if he's going to try to beat him, because all right, he came from Buffalo, <laughs> all right. So he played with Buffalo. So guess what, Dable and. Um, uh, you know, Shane, they, they are familiar with him, okay? And then we got, let's see, Antonio Williams, okay? Guess where he came from? Buffalo, right? So, once again, Shane and Dable, familiar with him, all right? So, he spent 20, 21, and 22 with Buffalo, okay? He was practice squad, activated, not activated, waived, this, that, and everything, but once again, came from Buffalo, they're familiar with him, so... Yeah, I mean, so it's it's good. That'll be that'll be certainly going to be a very interesting battle. Saquon number one, you know, um, they'll probably keep by three on the active roster. So who will be number two? Who will be number three? Who winds up making it to the practice squad? Very very interesting. But this is right. I mean, it's right. I mean, he does have a lot to gain. There's a, there's no clear cut. There's no Devontae Booker. Okay, there's no clear cut number two. All right, so he does have a shot. <clears throat> Okay, and next we're going down. Carter Coughlin. Here we go. All right, the, the, the Giants are lacking depth at several key areas, and one of those comes at inside linebacker. Yeah, I mean, they, they got guys. It's just that a lot of good veteran quality depth. <laughs> nope, not happening. <laughs> Returning Blake Martinez is obviously penciled in at one of those two spots. And that's the other thing. We see with, with Wink Martin, now you don't know. Are they going to have two inside linebackers just locked every play? Or they, I'm saying they're going to put three safeties, one guy walk up in the box who will then become like the other inside linebacker. If it's a pass play, he drops back in coverage, covers the tight end, covers the running back, maybe out of the backfield or something like that. Because one of the things we, we, you know, we don't have, okay, is a lot of good uh, – in, quality inside linebacker, especially who can cover as well, too. So that's why I'm kind of thinking you might have maybe three, cor- you know, 
We might have six defensive backs in there a, a lot of times. Three cornerbacks, you know, the, the two regulars, maybe whatever you want to call it, the nickel cornerback or the slot cornerback, right? But that I said, maybe three safeties. Two safeties, walk, uh, the third safety, walk him up in the box. So that would be very interesting to say. Um, the returning Blake Martinez, okay. The Tay Crowder will be considered the early favorite to start across on Martinez, but that's far from settled. Yeah, Tay Crowder led the, le- the team in tackles last year with 131, but if you look at his grades from PFA, I mean, he had some holes in his game big time. So, I mean, I'm sure the Giants are looking to upgrade that position. Mungners will have the opportunity to step in as Carter Coughlin, the team's seventh-round pick from 2020. Carter Coughlin missed 10 games last season due to injury, but is back in health and health here in 2022. He'll compete with the aforementioned Crowder, Cam Brown. Now, Cam Brown's good on, on special teams, but who also could have been listed here, too. Yeah, Darian Beavers, Michael McFadden, and Justin Hilliard for the starting role of playing time. Now, if you look here, right, with Mr. Car Coughlin. All right. Now, last year, oh, sorry, yeah, last year, okay, he was on the defensive line. All right. Now, they seem like in 2020, if I can switch this up here, 2020, okay, he was more like an edge rusher. Okay. He was on the defensive line. Okay. Look at 56 times, 27. That, that was the game against Seattle. Or not. I don't remember, but 31 times there, 17. I mean, so he was on a defensive line, kind of like AKA, like the edge rusher, right? 162 times in his first season, 2020. Then he was in the box, maybe kind of like AKA, maybe kind of like the inside linebacker, okay? 25 times. But you'll notice that that got reversed last year, okay? So that this might wind up being where he might wind up staying this year, okay? And once again, the inside linebacker. He was in the box, and he got hurt. So that's that's why he only played up to week seven. Now, obviously, he played the rest of the season like he did the, the year before that. These numbers would be far greater. But you'll notice last year, okay, Patrick Graham switched him up a little bit, trying to maybe move him on the inside, maybe the inside linebacker, okay? Had him 34 times. He was only like maybe on the defensive line or maybe like the edge rusher just four times, right? So he kind of switched it up a little bit. So that's kind of seems like where they're going to want to put him this year, or have him, because we got a, we got a boatload of edge rushers, right? So if he if he if he, he's trying to make the team as an edge rusher, that ain't happening, okay? I I really don't think that's going to happen. So that's why I think they got a good shot here. If I can find out where that Carter Coughlin, okay? So, cause I'm saying because Tay Crowder's got some holes in his game. All right, Cam Brown is very good on special teams, but he's got some big-time holes uh, if they want to put him in there, okay? So basically, you know, he's got you know he's got these two guys, but these are the two draft picks, all right? Giants spent some capital, draft capital on these guys. So they're going to want these guys, give these guys a good, a good looking over, okay? So Karnak, I mean, it's not like he's got like, three or four solid veterans in front of him, and he's got to somehow he's got to try to jump into the mix here and beat one of them out. Now, I mean, you got these two guys have no NFL experience. Cam Brown, I think this is his third year, so he's had two years. Tate Crowder has two years as well, too. So one, two, three. So four guys have combined the guys that kind of like he's battling out with have four years of NFL experience, so. He's got a shot. I mean, you know, it's the same thing with him. I mean, he's it's it's a very important year for him. You know, it's it's not his last season, but he's uh, you know he's also on the kind of on the cusp too. If some of those other guys do well and he doesn't, he's <laughs> he may not even make the practice squad. So it's 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 big for him. You know, I mean, somebody else will pick him up and put him on the practice squad or or whatever. But it is a big year for him. It is it is a big year. Then we got nose tackle DJ Davidson. Okay. The Giants, who will run again a multiple defenses in 2022, have just two true nose tackles on the roster. Veteran Justin Ellis and rookie DJ Davidson. Yeah. And Justin Ellis is not the long-term solution. Absolutely not. Okay. Ellis, understandably, entering training camp as the favorite to start, but don't be so quick to rule Davidson out. The six foot three, three hundred twenty seven pounder brings surprising athleticism and football smarts to the table. We're excited about working with him inside again, trying to add some depth up front there. 
General Manager Shane said after drafting Davidson. Davidson versus Ellis will be the Giants' only one-on-one -on -one training camp battle, which is true. I mean, they got they got another guy here listed. Um, point him out here. Where are we at here? Uh, Christopher Hinton. Okay, by the undrafted guy from Michigan. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's got a shot too. But I mean, if you, yeah, I mean, Justin Ellis is uh, what is he thirty? Oops, he's 31. He'll be 32 toward the end of this year. He'll be 32. So he's not the long-term solution. I mean, the Giants just kind of needed somebody in there, at least just to, you know, you know even even if he doesn't start or, or he's not, you know, I mean, Davidson, they, they, you're going to need some type of at least a backup. So, you know, will, will this be his only year with the Giants? Yeah, quite possibly. You know, I mean, the Giants can certainly pick up another nose tackle next year in the draft, right, without question. I mean, they got DJ Davidson here. You know, in the fifth round. The thing is, if they let Williams go, right, Leonard Williams after this season, because just to save some money, you know, I mean, they're going to, you know, maybe really want to maybe try to, you know, I mean, if they got DJ Davidson, you got Dexter Lawrence, I mean, you're going to want to at least maybe get somebody else in there, you know, to help beef up that uh, defensive line there. But he does. I mean, he's he's got, you know, he's not somebody, if you'll see, this is, this is from last year, okay? 542 total snaps. I mean, you look here. All season long, he got 11 pressures. He got one sack. All right. He got one hit, and he got nine hurries all last year. All right. So don't expect any. He's good, and he's athletic-wise and all that, and he's good against the run. Okay. But as far as getting, like, a lot of pressure on the quarterback, I mean, not, not a lot of times, I'm, I'm, you, know, you don't usually have nose tackles. They get, like, you know, 10 sacks. So. But he does usually what a nose tackle does, okay? I just run defense. You know, you know this is college, okay? He's very, very good. He graded out of 76. He's 77 against the run, all right? Uh, tackling 61.2. Pass rush to 69.6, okay? But uh, as I said, I mean, you know, don't, don't expect a lot, you know, as far as him, uh, as far as like any type of um, uh, super-duper pass rush, all right? But, you know, he'll be. He's, he's just a baby, all right? We, we just drafted him. He can certainly get some more size and some more strength to him and all and everything, right? But you say, yeah, nice size dude, all right? So, I mean, yeah, he's got a, you know, he it is a big year. I mean, but then if, if we let uh, Ellis go, right, maybe DJ winds up being the, the starter next year, right? So, I mean, it's a, it's a good year for him, good year for him. And then I think the last one, right, is Ellison Smith. So, I mean, uh, we're, we're starting to bring in the uh, the edge rushers. So, you know, <laughs> he, he can't afford what he did last year. He winds up getting hurt and winds up missing a boatload of time. I mean, he can't afford that. The Giants were excited about the potential of edge rusher Ellison Smith when they selected him in the fourth round of last year's draft, but they never really got to see that materialize. Well, also remember, Shane and Dable didn't draft him, okay? So let's keep that in mind. Smith's rookie season was marred by injury and multiple stints on the IR. He can't, cannot do that this year. He saw action in just eight games, taking 107 snaps on defense and 94 on special teams. All told, Smith recorded eight tackles, two quarterback hits, and one forced fumble. There was a flash or two, but nothing like the Giants expected. But under Wink Martindale, Smith now stands to benefit from a clean slate and a much more aggressive system. So he's got a clean slate, which is fantastic. However, once again, he's not, you know, he came with the team. All right. There's certainly a lot to wade through at outside linebacker and edge, but Smith is likely to enter camp just behind Aziz Ojolari on the death chart. Oh, yeah. He's, he's definitely going to be behind him. That sets him up for a roster battle against veteran Jihad Smith, as well as Quincy Roche and O'Shane Zimenez, yep, who will also benefit from a clean slate. Yeah. See, so, yeah, O'Shane Zimenez got, a, he, I mean, him too. You know, he's got a lot. Uh, he's 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 a Shermer guy. I mean, we're going back two regimes drafted by Gettleman, but he was a Shermer guy. Because I remember video, Shermer picking the phone up and talking to him. He, say, he picks the phone up, hey, X-Man, right? That was the first time he called, talked to the X-Man, so. 
The Giants like Smith more athleticism. It's possible Martindale finds a very specific role for him if he plays well throughout camp. Now, yeah, he has to because I mean, I said, if you look, I mean, you know, right? I mean, we got Aziz, you got Ellison Smith, but like Quincy Roche. I mean, Quincy Roche had, a, I mean, nothing super spectacular, but he had a couple, two and a half sacks last year, right? Ellison Smith had nothing. Okay. If you uh, said, if you wind up looking, where are we at here? All right, he had six. Total prize. He had two hits and four hurries, according to Pro Football Focus. You look at different, everybody's got different numbers. I just go by Pro Football Focus, right? He had a grand total of six, okay? But that's in six games, all right? So, I mean, it is what it is, all right? He didn't play a lot, right? But, I mean, as I said, if you say, I mean, as I said, I mean, Quincy Roche, you know, had a, uh, Shane Zimenez, Jihad Ward. I mean, as I said, this is a huge year for for or Shane Zimenez. I mean, if you know, if he doesn't, you know, they can just easily let him go, without question. And you know, I mean, if, if he doesn't, you know, help himself immensely, oh yeah, he's been big time disappointed. But I said, but, you know, Tom and Fox, you know, but Quincy Roche, I say Quincy Roche had two and a half sacks last year, and he was available. Elson Smith wasn't available, and he only had he had no sacks. So, all right, I mean, so it's uh, they, they they all got a lot, all right? All, they all got a lot. So, I mean, you know, and they have him just behind Aziz Ojolari. I mean, you know, but I said, but I, you can easily see if Quincy Roche has a uh, has a nice training camp that Quincy Roche could be there. So I'm saying, so he's kind of on that ball. How many guys are they going to wind up keeping? Okay, right? I mean, you know, Jihad Ward, you know, Shane Zimenez, you know, Quincy Roche, Ellison Smith. I mean, obviously, you got Aziz Ojolar and Kayvon Thibodeau. But you got one, two, three, Nico Lelos, okay? Uh, Tomin Fox, Quincy Roche, Ellison Smith. So you got six guys. How many of those six guys are they going to carry on the active roster? Are they going to keep five edge rushers, right? They're going to keep four on the active roster, who knows? I mean, if they keep four or five, well, yeah. Well, Ellison Smith be one of those. So this is a big, big, I mean, just not for him just to gain. I mean, this is a, just a big year for him, period, just to try to make the team. Because, if, you know, you're on a team. I mean, if you don't make the active 53, I'm sure they'll stick him on the, um, the practice squad. But the problem is being on the practice squad is if they don't protect them, some other team can, you know, pluck them and get them on their defense and, you know, the Giants don't want that. So you see, I mean, it, what the article has, I mean, the, the guys they put in there, it's, it's hard to, I mean, they, they all have obviously something, you know, to uh, gain at training camp. But um, do they have the most? Eh, you know, that's, that's very subjective. Uh, you know, you can argue for or against each one of these guys, obviously. You know, uh, Julian Love, it's going to be a big year for him because, uh, you know, Let's see, you know, what he can do. I mean, he'll not only have, he'll have a lot to gain this year, but he'll have a lot to gain coming down the road because if, if this is his fourth season. This is his final season. If the Giants don't pick up his, uh, con you know, extend his contract or, you know, offer him something, you know, he's going to go elsewhere. But, I mean, he wants to put, you know, this, this is his resume coming up this year, you know, especially if he's starting, you know, it's, it's big, you know, so it's, um, after the season's over, they said the Giants don't resign him, you know, he's going to go out there and he's, he's going to want to get paid from some team, right? I mean, then you got, the, obviously, Ricky Seals-Jones. I mean, that, you know, that's a big one, you know. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, he, he's been wandering from team to team for about six, at fifth team, and he's been on five teams in six years. I mean, it's like, you know, he's trying to get a home. So, I mean, he's got a lot, you know. Yeah, I mean, they all, all do. DJ Davidson, you know. We're not stacked at the nose tackle. So, I mean, you know, he's, he's got a lot. Obviously, he's a draft pick, right? So, they, you know, they're going to want him to do good, uh, you know. So, I mean, they all got, you know, something to, uh, you know, all they got something to fight for. But I mean, it's not just these seven guys. There's, there's quite a few other guys that have a lot to, uh, to fight for in the training camp. But the biggest thing is, you know, yeah. 
Anyways, with the Giants, you got to stay healthy. Because if you ain't healthy, you ain't worth much of anything. <laughs> if you ain't healthy, you know, you ain't got nothing to fight for in training camp. Well, as always, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video. You guys stay safe out there and go Giants! Woo!